Hi, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of Food as Medicine. This is episode number four. I'm your co-host, David Farrell, and today I'm going to be talking to my other co-host, Rebecca O'Reilly. Hi, Bex. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Nice to be here. I feel like it's been a while since our last show, so it's it's kind of exciting to be back. Right. Yeah, it's been a very, I'd say, challenging winter on many levels, and uh, it has been a while since our last show. But we've uh, been feeling inspired to to come back strong in in the spring with some of our favourite, uh, really rich green plants. And so today's show is going to be talking about uh, what we might call spring greens. Um, but there's a whole collection of some of our favourite green characters in the mix for today. Um, but uh, let's uh, get into this, Bex, and perhaps you can give our audience an overview of wh why you wanted to talk about spring greens today and, and what's going to be in, in, in today's show. Yeah, absolutely. Well, when, when I say spring greens, actually, we're sort of talking about the whole, as you say, all the characters, the whole family of what we, we consider leafy greens. So I'm talking about not only the spring greens that we see popping up at this time of the year, like nettle and dandelion, for example, um, but also things like coriander, parsley, spinach, rocket, um, you know, radish greens, watercress, I mean, all the, all the salad leaves. So we have, we have tons and tons of what we call leafy greens. And these are such an important part of our diet. And yet they are so underrated and so underconsumed. Mm -hmm. And one of the points that I really, really want to highlight today is what these leafy greens hold. And that is their mineral salt and trace mineral content. And this, um, these trace minerals that, that are in leafy greens are really what um, help our whole electrical circuit to function. You know, the, the, the brain and the whole nervous system and, you know, the, our whole beings ultimately are electricity. And that electricity needs certain things to function and it needs um, mineral salts, trace minerals in order to function. So we've got to have them, they're critical. If we break down what the body functions on, it functions on glucose and mineral salts. Those are the two primary components of basically what the human body runs on. And leafy greens are what provide that other component, which is the mineral salts. And we get our glucose then from our more carbohydrate foods like potatoes, sweet potatoes and fruits, for example. Um, but what's really um, uh, what's really beautiful about these trace minerals is that they're not only essential for the functioning of the, the, the brain and the whole body, they also connect us to source. Mm -hmm. And when I, 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 I was reading this, this is um, more recent from um, one of medical mediums, more recent, most recent book, the brain saver book, which is completely mind blowing. I mean, I, you know, if, if anyone hasn't had a chance to dip into it, I really, I really do recommend it because it takes our understanding of food to a whole different level. And um, when he talks about trace minerals in leafy greens in particular, he describes them as, as, as being the, the connector when it comes to food, the connector to something higher. So when these trace minerals enter the bloodstream and travel to the brain, they, they connect with our soul. And then in turn, that helps us to connect to the moon and the stars and the beyond. But not only that, when they enter into the bloodstream, they are picking up on the frequency of both the brain and the beyond at the same time. And this activates them and it gives them an intelligence a sort of a beyond intelligence which directs them to where they need to go in the body they know exactly where they need to go in the body in order to do the deeper healing yeah. so i just think that that that's so that's so fascinating you know that we that we can we can have these foods and that they can function in that way and i see it you know i see it in the clients i'm working with who are really really sick when they when they bring in a diet which is super super low in fat but super high in greens with the right carbohydrates people start to recover it is unbelievable and and because we're seeing more and more neurological system more and more neurological symptoms and diseases now it's it's major you know symptoms of the nervous system in particular are are you know are what's happening in the world you know it's a breakdown of the brain and the nervous system which affects motor function it affect it, it, it affects how we function in in every single way because it, it also affects how we think how we feel how we operate 
Mm-hmm. And often the missing piece in someone's healing journey is the leafy greens. And certainly I've experienced that on my healing journey. You know, I, at the beginning, I was much, much more focused on the carbohydrate foods and struggled to bring in so many leafy greens. But when I made that commitment to bringing in significantly more greens, my healing was significantly, um, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like elevated, expanded. elevated, expanded, where it was more rapid. You know, I, I noticed an, a mm. rapid increase in my energy levels, a noticeable difference in my skin, how how my digestion was functioning. Like it was really significant, and it it's challenging. You know, so so the goal is to bring in is to bring in one pound of leafy of raw. I'm talking about raw leafy greens because leafy greens really need to be raw in order for them in you know in order for us to really gain their um their benefits and and we need to be aiming especially if you're healing for one pound a day which is 450 grams of leafy greens wow which is a lot of and that that can be juiced it can be juiced it can be blended it can be it can be eaten as salads for example so there's different ways of bringing them bringing them in right so basically we need to connect with our inner rabbit is that what you're saying (laughs) this is it this is it we need to summon the inner rabbit exactly exactly but all joking aside you know um i know you were involved with the uh, elder emotion we did uh back last year and i think one of the most mind-blowing things that came out of that for me and again i've repeated this a bit but you just jogged my memory is just how different types of intelligence can actually come into our field and give us what we need in an almost uniquely tailored way and it seems that um in the same way that elder is that immuno neuromodulator that can talk to our system beyond the brain actually in the beyond and come to that quantum understanding it seems that what you're saying is that these mineral uh, trace mineral salts can do the same thing is that correct i would say absolutely but i i would say every single food has you know every every food well especially the healing foods when i say the healing foods i'm talking about um fruits vegetables herbs spices wild foods for example the these foods hold that intelligence you know these are really and and you know elder would fall into that category nettle dandelion you know all the plants that we've worked with on the immersions for example they they would fall into this category of healing healing foods and plants and Mm -hmm. it is them that hold this intelligence which is i just think it's 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 totally beautiful and mind-blowing at the same time you know when when we learn how to work with these um foods and beings then it's then it's a very very different thing it's it's very sacred it becomes a different relationship altogether you know totally and maybe that's where we're being taken on this journey you know that whether it's food as medicine or plant medicine you know we're kind of seeing it the same way i think increasingly and and it's like these beings that we perceive as plants that either give us fruits nuts or trace minerals or many other beautiful things is we're now understanding these incredibly intelligent beings who are able to offer a range of you could almost say services really uh, it sounds a little disrespectful but it's like the, you know they're, they're here and they're like well i can help you with this i can help you with this but i can also help you with this and by the way you don't even really need to get involved i'm going to talk to your subconscious mind your galactic mind however we want to think about this and 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 he's going to or she's going to tell me what you need so monkey mind doesn't need to get involved here which is just as well right because we know from uh some of our past conversations that the brain can get these heavy metals in it and create these kind of loops and circuits the old hamster wheel Uh, and i'm sure many of our audience have had hamster wheel moments over the last couple of years where some things just keep looping round and round can you say anything about that bex yeah and and such such a good point so so you know from the perspective of leafy leafy greens and trace minerals um this the the the, the sort of toxic heavy metals component is a really important thing to bring into this discussion here because trace minerals and toxic heavy metals are almost like arch enemies if you like and so so um toxic heavy metals will have a have a destructive or negative charge while trace minerals have a very beneficial charge And when we have a lot of toxic heavy metals in the brain, trace minerals really help to um, counter them in some ways, but it's hard work. So when there's a lot of heavy metals, trace minerals have to work much, much harder. And if we're not getting enough trace minerals, then the brain is really, really up against it. Um, The other thing to mention is that when, um, uh, is that toxic heavy metals create an awful lot of heat while trace minerals help to cool everything down so there's this constant sort of 
um, you know, battle between hot and cold all the time because we don't want our brain running hot. When our brain is running hot, then we're, you know, then then everything is in sort of, you know, jumped up sympathetic yeah. agitated mode you know so we always glucose and mineral salts really help to cool everything down so it's really really important that we're getting enough glucose and enough trace minerals in order to in order to counter that i mean toxic heavy metals are they're not called toxic heavy metals for no reason like they're yeah. so highly toxic to the human body i mean what you know but what's interesting is that they is that both toxic heavy metals and mineral salts or trace minerals, they're both metals. You know, mm. when we're talking about the brain and the body, I mean, ultimately we're talking about electricity and metals. It's just that we've got two very, very different types of metals here. We've got, you know, toxic heavy metals, which were originally, you know, a naturally occurring elements, but they've been taken by industry and been forged or changed in some way which makes them highly toxic to the human body. Whereas trace minerals are naturally occurring metals that we find in plant food sources that are highly beneficial to the human body. Right, you know, I think this is a really important point and a couple of things just to say here, you know, so it's a bit like glucose and sugar, right? We need glucose, but artificial sugar is also detrimental to the body. And, um, yeah. You know, whether, um, you know, it's like we also need metals in the body to make us physical, to make us whole. That's part of the construction of the of the human yeah. body. So it's not like metals in the body are bad. You know, we can even put things like colloidal silver into our body, which is beneficial to us. Right. So let's just want to be clear that it's not that all metals in the body are bad, but there are different types of, of metals. And the ones that we're most concerned about right now, and this is, I guess, partly why we wanted to do this talk today at, at this point, is that we're both very aware of the... I, I would guess to say the, the almost endemic toxic heavy metal problem that we have in our wider society right now. I see in every single client that, uh, that I do, and particularly over the last two years, and particularly with some of the, uh, let's say, medications that have been offered over the last couple of years, there's a lot of toxic heavy metals in those and also that are shed from those. So we have a, a toxic heavy metal problem that is ubiquitous. Uh, and I know that we've been on this tip for a while and I think it comes up in every talk that we do, but this is a really important moment uh, where humanity needs to, to rid itself of these dense materials that are actually, I think in many ways, preventing us from receiving more light. And it's interesting that these very leafy green plants that are able to fit photosynthesize so well, hence why they're so green with chlorophyll, uh, uh, are the plants that we need right now, you know? So um, what are your thoughts around that, Bex? I know it's something we talk about a lot, but. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I completely, completely agree with everything that you're saying. I think that, you know, our exposure to toxic heavy metals is so underrated, you know, because, because we're not sort of, you know, because we're not sort of tangibly seeing them. People right. find it very, very hard to grasp that they're having a huge, like, huge effect on people's health it's enormous but they're everywhere like they're in the pots and pans that you cook with every day you know I mean for goodness sake if you're cooking don't scrape metal on metal you know if you have a stainless steel pan don't scrape it with a steel with a with a with a with a, with a spoon a metal spoon use a wooden spoon because metals come into the body in tiny 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 amounts you know so they're in our they're in our pots and pans. They're in aluminium foil that people use in the kitchen. Use parchment paper instead of aluminium foil. You know, yeah. they are in our you know in our water system. They're in our rainfall. You know, we've got I mean we've got we've got chemtrails all over the place. They're you know so so they're coming out of the sky in this sense. They're in every single medication, every right. single medication from ibuprofen to you know medical treatments that have been you know that you're given as a baby to medical treatments you've been given over the last couple of the years you know they they're they're everywhere they're everywhere so they Even are the air, right from the chemtrails from the pollution yeah. from cars i mean every car exhaust is emitting some kind of trace exactly. heavy metals right in various forms so, so we have to work really really hard to counter that you know and one of the ways that we can counter that is through the foods that we eat it's really really important yeah 
So, um, you know, and just to emphasize that point, you know, what I see when I'm doing uh, my healing work with clients is often there's this very strong correlation to the amount of toxic heavy metals that I'm able to, to track and trace in the client's field, but also how is their immune system functionality? These are both things that I check for increasingly so, because what I've been seeing is a rapid uh, decrease in uh, clients' immune system functionality. And what's really interesting is that many of them are also not aware of actually how sick they are. Um, because like you said, it's almost intangible and, and maybe some of the side effects of the medications that have been released over the last couple of years is that people are even more disconnected from their bodies. So they re realize even less that they're sick. Meanwhile, in the background, the heavy metals are still going on and they're still basically the way I see it is, is degrading the natural immune system that we have. And like you said, these electrical circuits that they then can create in the body, whether it's in the in the brain, what we might call the lower mind or the monkey mind or elsewhere in the body can also then receive other perhaps unhelpful frequencies, yeah. whether intentionally or unintentionally is a topic for another conversation. But we do understand that the, the world we live in right now is, is very much about frequency. And some of the major events of the world this last couple of weeks have caused people to question what kind of frequencies are coming at us now from the skies and maybe from outer space. Um, yeah. But those have probably always been going on. But now we're, I feel like we're being guided to understand that everything around us is frequency. Yeah. And how do we receive or even maybe reject certain frequencies from our field that's either uh, are beneficial for us or non-beneficial. So this is a really, really important point. And I know we hammer it a lot, but we both believe in the importance of this, right? Yeah, for sure. And 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 it's very, very hard to, you know, um, it's you know, it's I should say it's much harder to protect yourself from those frequencies when you are very, right. very toxic internally. You know, the more the more heavy metals there are the more mind control there is. And this is one of the reasons why we are being flooded with heavy metals mm -hmm. is so that there can be more mind control, you know? I mean, control has that, I mean, this is not a new thing, right? You know, how, how do we control people? It's, you know, this has been going on since the beginning of time. Well, heavy metals is a really, really good way of, of doing it. Keeping people sick is a really, really good way of controlling people, you know? So our health plays a major, major role in this kind of, you know, this this bigger sort of um, battle that's going on at the moment, for want of a better word, you know. Right. I mean, there's definitely uh, without wanting to get too into the military sort of uh, analogies, there is definitely a, a fight for the for humanity, for humanity's soul, for the direction of humanity at this time. And, you know, uh, I know that you're into astrology a little bit the same way that I am. And, and right now we have uh, Pluto at 29 degrees of Capricorn. and We've just had Mercury, a metal, weirdly, uh, passing across conjuncting um, Pluto and, you know, uh, at that anoretic 29th degree of Capricorn. And so I feel that what we're now seeing is the end result. We're being shown actually how control has been uh, wielded over us and one of the ways has been through poisoning us mm -hmm. and keeping this in dense low vibrational frequencies through uh, putting unhelpful substances including toxic heavy metals and a whole range of other stuff too um, which we do yeah so this is where we're at and this is i think a big part of our sovereignty uh journey let's call it a journey to sovereignty right and the the what we put it we are what we eat let's just put it into that phrase we are what we eat right and so if we're eating plants and we're going to get i think a bit more into the superheroes in a minute but if we're eating these wonderful leafy greens or you know i'm, I'm calling them spring greens because as a herbalist we know that at this time yeah. we have nettle dandelion cleavers wild garlic these are the more medicinal um food uh herbs that come up so my mind tends to be on these but of course we have the opportunity now to to start growing even in our greenhouses maybe or in our gardens we can put the seeds for the leafy greens because they grow super quick um so this is i feel like a, an important uh how to say tool or you know a self-defense uh um weapon that we have to protect ourselves from the incoming pollution and toxicity that is everywhere uh we can't just say that you know oh, it's only in certain places no this is a, a global problem yeah a huge absolutely and I, I echo all of that. And just another sort of, you know, another couple of aspects that I want to bring in, you know, on, on, on this topic is the alkalizing effect that these have in the body, because this, this is also really important. We, it's really important that we create overall a more alkaline environment in the body, because this is then an environment where, you know, we we're less likely to have pathogens like viruses, bacteria, parasites etc flourish 
And one of the areas that can become very, very acidic is the lymphatic system, because often because when there's an overburdened and sluggish liver, then we get this overspill into the lymphatic system because the liver is not coping properly. And that can create a very acidic and sluggish lymph. And one of the roles of all the leafy greens across the board is to really help like purge and expel these toxins from the lymphatic system so that it remains more alkaline, which is not always possible. I mean, a lot of people who come to see me would already be in a state who have a very sludgy and more acidic lymphatic system. So that all needs cleaning up. But the rest of the body systems are completely reliant on the lymphatic system remaining alkaline. So it's super, super important that we work from the understanding of we've got to clean up the liver and we've got to clean up the lymph in order for healing to happen across the rest of the body. It's absolutely critical. So just for our audience out there who may be not so familiar with all of the different systems of the body, just give us a little explanation about what does the lymphatic system do and what's its function within the entirety of the, of the terrain of the human body? Yeah, sure. So the lymphatic system is ultimately part of the immune system. So it's it's like this, it's like this sort of um, weaving of um, vessels, if you like, throughout the body that pick up, pick up waste and help to clear it. That's its that's its role. It contains immune cells. So if pathogens get into the lymph into the lymphatic system, for example, then it helps to the immune cells, the white blood cells in, within the lymph can help to, um, you know, act, act as a defense against that, uh, against that virus or bacteria. But that, that is difficult when the lymphatic system is sludgy and thick and, and overloaded. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah, of course. And perhaps you could also give some examples of how a lymphatic system can become sludgy, thick and overloaded and why why we have these beautiful plants at this time to help us after the winter when, when we often are a bit more sedentary. Yeah. So again, this is going back to the liver. So so when so if there's too many, for example, if there's too many toxic heavy metals, herbicides and pesticides, plastics, you know all the all the bombardment of of toxins that were w that we we have in today's world pathogens as well when the liver becomes overburdened from this and its filter is not filtering properly then there is an overspill into the bloodstream and in turn into the lymphatic system into that waste system so it's almost like the lymphatic system acts as a backup to the liver but but because there is such a big overspill the lymphatic system also starts to get sludgy and and overloaded and yeah it's that that's really where where it starts and then when that happens it affects the other organ systems of the body because you're ultimately you've got dirty blood wandering around the body and all these toxins wandering around the body so how can the central nervous system then cope how can the endocrine system then cope so we've got to bring, keep bringing it back to the liver and the lymphatic system. It's absolutely critical. This is where it has to start. So it's almost, you know, like the battleground for our body is in, is in this place. It's like, you know, with all of the onslaught of unhelpful um, toxic heavy metals and herbicides and pesticides and all of the other yuck that's out there. It's like we need to make sure that our liver uh, is, is functioning uh, as well as it needs to so that it can support the immune system. And of course, you know, we, we're big, <laughs> big fans of our old friend, El Dandelero, uh, Dionte de Leon, the beautiful yeah. dandelion plant, because he's a master at helping to not only uh, cleanse the liver, but also to help the whole system. So, um, you know, in, in the Northern Hemisphere, we're just uh, coming out out of, of winter now and so during this sort of the cold dark months we tend to be indoors a lot more not moving around as much so the system yeah. itself also slows down yes. so can you share anything about that and you know how can we also support our our yeah. lifestyle maybe not just with leafy greens but what, what else can we do to get the system kind of re-energized at this time yeah. of year absolutely i love that that's such a great question and yes i mean in, you know we we need we need to move like the lymph needs to move the lymph the lymphatic system contains the lymph fluid and it's the lymph fluid that's dealing with all of this, you know, mucky waste. So we need to move. We need to like get everything moving in order to shift things. 
Um, so one one thing I love is doing like a, a qigong sort of shakeout um, early in the morning. It's a really good idea when you get out of bed to do a ten minute, five minute, ten minute shakeout um, to really start to move the limp because you've been obviously you've been lying all night, so everything has been a bit more stagnant. So getting up first thing in the morning before you sit and do any meditation practice or go get your breakfast or whatever it is that you do it's a really good idea just to shake and you you, you know you don't have to follow anything formal you can literally just dance it out you know you can put on a piece of music and just jump up and down and dance for 10 minutes because that will really start to get the blood and the lymph moving absolutely essential yeah i love it and uh, i remember one of the talks i did with the ascended master zachariah and he was telling us actually the importance of shaking it out uh having a dance putting on some music yeah. uh you know or, or doing chigong or tai chi or yoga any of these things but he was very clear that he said a lot of what we're facing now the the new levels of toxicity that have entered into our wider social arena over the last couple of years because of the things we've talked about before he said one of the best ways is to move and to shake those and he said if you go to the gym if you do uh zoom classes or anything like this you know that really just shaking things out is going to shake off uh, a lot of stuff so uh, I did wonder whether it was a good idea to maintain social distancing in those situations as somebody else next to you might be shaking right. their stuff off onto you uh, I don't know about that but um, I, I would still suggest maintain a healthy space while you're shaking it out um, probably better to do it outside on your lawn maybe with your headphones on uh, early in the morning so that mother earth can take you know away anything that's been shaken out but yeah. i think this is really important and you know perhaps some of the um situations that we faced during 2020 particularly being locked down actually took many of us out of our normal health routines our normal exercise routines. certainly for me it did i didn't get out on the bike uh, i didn't get to the gym uh, mm -hmm. all of things which would have been regulars in my week and to be honest uh, since since 2020 i've struggled to get back into those routines yeah. because of the stop start nature of everything that we've been experiencing in our world uh, it has thrown the routine out and um you know I'm, I'm very aware that i've become a lot more sedentary and needing to move a lot more but also uh not feeling the urge to get out too much it's kind of yeah, yeah maybe this is something our audience is also struggling with a bit yeah well I, I i resonate with that as well and i think when you when you get out of a rhythm and routine if you know I mean it's like anything it's like eating healthy food it's really hard to get back into it if you've had a, if you've had a bad run you know until you're at the point of desperation it's right. like we have to drive ourselves down right down to the very rock bottom point of desperation before we're willing to shift things again you know and sometimes it can be the same with doing your yoga practice or doing your shake out morning routine or going for a daily walk you know and I and I do I do see this with clients a lot you know there's a there's the sort of, you know, retraining of the brain to get back into doing, you know, creating good habits. And I and I think that this time of year is particularly tough. You know, January, February, even even the first half of March, you know, it's 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 been a long, a long winter. People are tired, people are run down, people have had enough, they need some sunshine. And it's then that I think you know, we start really, and the body starts feeling it, you know, and then it affects how we feel when we haven't been moving so much. So of course, it's never just one, it's never just food, you know, there's always more components to this that need to be, um, that need to be assessed for sure. I mean, maybe this is a deeper existential question, but like, why do we all find it so hard to eat healthy food? <laughs> it's like, why, why, you know, you know, is it, why? is it, is it because we, because I don't, you know, a hundred years ago it, that wasn't the case because there wasn't access to you know the, the the level of processed foods that we have today you know one one of the reasons is because the foods that we are mm -hmm. you know the foods that we are exposed to today in, in today's world the more processed foods for example are highly highly addictive like they are they have they have chemical compounds in them that are highly addictive i mean natural flavors is a really good example i mean this is a whole other this is a whole other show just on its own because the term natural flavors is so misleading you would it would imply that something is you know it's it, it's completely natural it's a flavoring that's natural it's from nature you know natural flavors could not be less natural they are they are chemically synthesized in you know compounds that are created in a lab that are totally foreign to the human body. And yet natural flavors are in just about every single protein powder on the market. 
they're in health 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 bars they're you know you go to a health food shop and you see natural flavors in almost every single label but we don't know what the precise chemical composition of those natural flavors are because depending on the company that's made them it will differ every time and very often within that natural flavoring umbrella will be msg and msg is highly 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 destructive and addictive to the human brain so you just don't know what you're eating half the time you know even when you think you're eating natural health food you know health bars it's it, it's it's that it's it's that so you know one of the things that uh, i often uh, see within my own lifestyle and certainly within clients is is the inability or or perhaps um not even inability but somehow the impossibility of creating time for ourselves you know, what can be more important than our health? And yet this is a question that seems to be very, very far away from the minds of most Westerners. And it's like, why do we persist in behavior that is not beneficial for us? And, you know, again, we come back to mind control, programming, dumbing down of the system, all of these things. And, and you know, whether it's making time to get up and do exercise, making time to do the smoothies in the morning, you know, we've talked about this on previous shows, particularly the, the wonderful uh, heavy metal detox movie. And, you know, uh, and and even I guess you have this with your clients sometimes, and certainly I do, is that the resistance yeah. to changing a routine or yeah. retraining ourselves in in our daily routine, so that uh, what we put into our body, how we look after ourselves, is not something that's done after we've done nine to five, after we've been to the pub, after we've been out for a nice slap up dinner with a big piece of cake afterwards. Then maybe just before we go to bed, like oh, maybe tomorrow I'm going to do something healthy for myself. And yeah. tomorrow never ever comes tomorrow rolls into a holiday rolls into a family gathering etc cetera, etc cetera. and then you realize that initial thought you had about being healthy was now nearly 12 months ago <laughs> and you still haven't taken any steps so yeah. you know i'm sure you must come up against this a lot uh, you know even with the, with the best will in the world many clients want want to get better but somehow their daily routines prevent them and i i certainly struggle with this sometimes with the amount of output for work with clients with healings yeah. YouTube, etc. It's often difficult to find the time. So, how do we address this problem, Bex? How, how are we going to address this problem collectively? Because I feel that this is yeah. a collective issue that we're all facing right now. It is a collective issue, and I and I would say, you know, sadly, the driving force most of the time is getting sick. That's the that's right. the point at which people are willing to change. And before that, it can be very very difficult for people to change their habits. But I, I can say from personal experience, you know, I mean, I've been doing celery juice and, and heavy metal detox smoothie consistently for, for about four years now. And the difference that it makes to my day and my life and my brain and how I function is it's huge. So when I, you know, if I have a break from that, if I have a gap, I really, really notice the difference. So that's what keeps urging me back onto the path all the time, because it is really, really easy to get swayed in our world, you know? So it's it's almost like you have to reap the benefits in order to be able to experience something for the first time. And once you've experienced something at a deep enough level, it, it's easier for it to stick. It doesn't mean it's gonna stick forever, we still have to work bloody hard for it to be there, you know, for, for, it, for, it to, for it to remain. But I think it becomes less difficult. And I think it becomes less difficult the less toxic we become, you know, because your body is inherently drawn to those things that are good for it. You know, again, it's back to this, this aspect of drawing in the light. You know, it's like your body wants more of that and more of that. It craves the leafy greens, you know. But I agree, look, it's challenging when we're busy with work and we've got a lot going on, but we can make things simple. You know, when I'm when I'm busy, I have busy weekdays and I'm seeing a lot of clients during during the day. I have a smoothie for breakfast and I have a smoothie for lunch and I make sure I have some supper on the go that will last me two, three days at a time. You know, I've got to make things simple, but smoothies are such an amazing way of getting in fruit but also packing in a lot of greens and it's the greens that provide the micro fats and the micro proteins that's also another really important point of this you know where where are we getting our proteins and our fats from well the body needs far less protein and fat than is suggested out there and the way that we can really maximize you know the the fats and the proteins that the body knows exactly how to deal with is from getting a lot of leafy greens. 
it's you know the the difference between eating a lot of leafy greens and not is is a more balanced as a more balanced blood sugar it's a more you feel much more balanced day to day when you're getting enough greens if you're not getting enough greens then you feel like you're on more of a roller coaster especially if you're eating a plant-based diet if you're eating more animal food and, and heavier foods then those foods contain more fat so they're going to be more satiating for a longer period of time but that's not necessarily a good thing because it's a big big burden for the liver so it's important just to keep looking at you know how these foods function in the body on a physiological level and what they're what they're doing for us and I think the more you can understand then the more incentivized you are to change your ways you know that 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 is one component some people are more you know if you like more um intellectually or information rooted they have to understand things intellectually in order to be able to practice it or embody it and other people are more experience rooted in the sense that they will just try something have the experience and then they go from there you know and I think people who are more sort of intellectually minded or rooted I should say tend to go down more rabbit holes because they're they're less willing to just jump into the experience and try it and get on with it they tend to want to know everything about it before they mm. before they go there does that make sense it does you know and it's an interesting point because you know that type of person tends to follow the science uh, and, and as we know science is often uh, correcting itself and, and admitting that maybe we didn't quite get it right and so uh, I do feel that, you know, with um, with the astrology that's coming up with Saturn but about to move into Pisces, which is also a lot to do with medications, to do with drugs, to do with things that are less beneficial on the system, um, but also with Pluto squaring the nodes coming up and the, the north node is in Taurus and the south node is currently in Scorpio and will be until the summer. It's almost as if, you know, we're being encouraged to look again at what we put into our body mm -hmm. uh, maybe not to follow the science, but to follow the feeling. How does this feel in my body? Does it make Absolutely. me feel sluggish and shitty or out? Or do I feel vibrant, alive, and ready to go and take on the world? And, you know, I feel we, we've got a sort of a collective issue with discipline, a self-discipline, I think, yeah. which is also really interesting. And whether it's how we use our time, whether it's where we put our attention, yeah. uh, whether it's what we put in our bodies, it's like, you know, I think that, uh, and I would include myself in this at times, and even and though I think too. it's super sure. disciplined, I can be super slack and just it all yeah. go out the window in, in a moment because I'm Absolutely. like, you know what? I've had a shitty day. I need a drink. I want to go out and <laughs> eat some bad food and party. And, you know, and, and this is also part of the problem we've got right now is that we haven't been able to enjoy ourselves, actually, really over the last few years. I don't really know anyone who's really enjoyed themselves a huge amount over the last few years. Yeah. And, and there is, and Pete even talked about it on Weber Weird. It's like, we all need to go down the beach and have a party. But yeah. unfortunately, when we have a party, we often tend to imbibe those stuff that's not so good for us because we're feeling like we've had a hard time we need something that makes us feel good even temporarily whether it's a nice yeah. good chocolate bar or a nice uh, mezcalito or whatever it is that's our little tipple um so it's i see that it's a challenge that we've got right now and you know yeah. how do we balance and i think this is where a plant like nettle and of course you know uh, we have a nettle emotion coming up which you're going to be giving a talk on too uh, yeah. during the first you know, couple of weeks of March and it's like nettle is a plant that gives us discipline and gives us the boundaries and maybe that's what we all need right now is to be a little more boundaried with ourselves and what we're putting in so that yes we can still enjoy a little mezcal or a piece of chocolate or whatever but it doesn't become the go-to crutch um, yeah. that, that is something that makes the rest of the day seem okay and for sure in western society and I'm sure you would agree with this that in the corporate days of the past you know the thing you look forward to most uh, during the week was Friday afternoon when you yeah. got to have beer o'clock at five o'clock and go and hang out with your mates down the pub and say hey that was a pretty tough week but thank god we can have a beer yeah. right and there's not really nothing wrong with that in some ways but it's become almost a habitual process where it had become a habitual process before the lockdowns and in many ways I think the process of the last few years has been trying to show us these habitual situations that we've got ourselves into being programmed into because you know in the western world as a nine to five Monday to Friday it's hard going and particularly if you're working in someone like London or a major city in the world the body's being assaulted all day long by a whole wealth of stuff other people's stuff toxic pollutants 
you know so so we're kind of in this ever decreasing circle that we happily participate in some ways and yeah. again you know it comes back to the natural flavorings msg and you know i remember uh, thinking to myself when i first discovered about msg that when you went to a chinese restaurant it was optional whether they put msg in your oh food or not God. and I mean, i'm just like okay so what is this stuff and then i started to look into it. i'm like oh my gosh thank god it's optional and so i don't have to have it but what yeah. can you tell us about this you know as part of the wider picture and and also well any of the points i've just raised back to, what would you like to bounce back <laughs> yeah i mean i i would echo everything that you're saying and i and i you know this this sort of um you know this this issue around discipline is is a, is an interesting one i mean i think it's it's a again it's a it's almost a bigger conversation um, but I think par partly why we find it so hard to sort of, you know, come back to ourselves and be and find that still point is because we are so overstimulated and so bombarded from so many different angles, you know, not just with with toxicity and poor quality food stuff, but also, you know, we're bombarded with radiation, which has you know the 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 effect that radiation has on our electrical energy like we are electrical beings and so we're up against forces that are countering the natural coherence of our systems so we're becoming very very incoherent you know the more the more we enter we've gone from 3g to 4g to 5g for example this is creating bigger and bigger levels of incoherency in the human system and the more incoherent we become, the harder it is for us to find that inner still point. And that could be extended also to discipline or what we're doing, because we're constantly like, you know, the brain is like this, you know, it's very difficult to come back to it being like this. So I, I think it's a big, big problem. And I think we, we really, really need to dig deep right now to find our own ways of countering what we're exposed to from the outside world and i think one way that we can do that is by working with the plants you know and creating a relationship with the plants that is of a higher intelligence and that includes how we eat and that you know involves communicating and connecting with a plant in a in a in a deeper way inviting it into your space learning how to do these things on on your immersions coming and joining the the cleanses that i run you know these these are the ways that we can create more community and be doing things together and learn the tools and the techniques to create more discipline in our lives so i i think it's 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 important that we look at how we can do this collectively rather than trying to battle it out on our own all the time you know We've got to come together to understand these things better and to learn from each other. Right, you know, and uh, we'll come maybe to the the two uh, upcoming cleanses and immersions that we're both holding during uh, March. But uh, you know, uh, the one that we're working with is nettle, and much as nettle is an incredible uh, food source, you know, I, I love talking about nettle. It's a, a great a substitute for spinach. Goes really well with a poached egg, although you might not agree with that. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like uh, eggs Benedict, but I did it with a nettle. Um, but, you know, all joking aside, um, when we get beyond the physical properties and nettle is an adaptogenic plant. And so it's a plant that's always trying to bring us back into balance. This is also a deeply meditative plant. Now, you wouldn't think it to look at nettle very much with the energy of, of Mars and of fire. But it's also the plant that the great uh, Tibetan Buddhist, Milarepa, uh, sat in a cave with drinking for 20 years. That was all he drank. He, he, he drank so much he went green, which I think is kind of cool. Uh, I wouldn't mind. Uh, he had green hair and green skin, which I think would be pretty cool. Wow. Right? Little wow. green pins, See? maybe. <laughs> See how those leafy greens can take action in the body. <laughs> right. But this guy became enlightened uh, sitting in a cave for 20 years drinking nettle tea. Now, if we really want to be disciplined and take time out from what's going on in the world, that's one way of doing it. Uh, perhaps doesn't really fit that well with the rest of our life routine, maybe what our family's up to or, you know, what we're trying to share in the world. But the point I'm trying to make is that sometimes these plants have spiritual, emotional qualities to them. And mm -hmm. nettle very much has the quality of discipline, actually, very much carries the energy of a Roman centurion about being disciplined and being a warrior, but being a meditational warrior. That's what I love about nettle. Um, because of his um, uh, his adaptogenic qualities and the need to bring us back into balance, 
he's trying to bring us into an emotional place of balance or what I would call equilibrium. So these plants not only have the capacity to help balance out our, our physical body, but actually when we engage with them at a more spiritual, emotional level, which is what we're talking about a lot through food as medicine, is not just seeing plants as food or plants yeah. as medicine, but seeing them as spiritual beings that we're somehow yeah. able to receive their gifts from by in, you know, imbibing them or bringing them into our system so this is where i see that you know we're also now understanding more about plants from this kind of spiritual emotional perspective mm -hmm. uh, and and through the science through looking at you know um uh, looking at what's in the plants looking at their you know their constituents and i still feel we're very much at the beginning mm -hmm. of looking at plants in the laboratory and understanding okay energetically quantum we understand that the plant does this but how does that then appear within the chemical makeup of a of a plant uh, being and, you know, we've been living in a society that's been liking to take plants apart and say, hey, this is the bit that we really need. We're going to make a pill out of this. We're going to patent it and then sell it. Whereas a more indigenous shamanic perspective would always be, well, the plant is already completely fine. It's, it's you know, it's beautiful. It doesn't need to be taken apart. But if we can start to decode the, uh, the, the makeup of a plant, and again, you know, I've been uh, talking with uh, Shirley Chantel, the Murian Dreamweaver artist, who's been channeling these amazing light code languages of plants. Mm -hmm. It's like maybe now the plants are opening up to us and showing us their more galactic selves, mm -hmm. their more uh, chemical side. And maybe we can start to talk to the plants in a different way that is not just, uh, you know, something we put into our body and it does this, this and this. But we start to understand yeah. how it's interacting with every single component in our own body, which I think is incredible. And, you know, I guess another aspect of this is also how does our gut flora talk to the microbiomes in the soil? I think that that's one of the most incredible pieces of quantum information I've discovered the last years, which gives rise to the whole viable adage of what you need grows in your garden. Right. So imagine this. If we're able to consciously be aware that our stomach is already consciously communicating with our garden. Whatever appears in our immediate environment is what we need. This is very much dandelion. Be aware of what's going on around you. Observe yeah. what the terrain, the wider terrain around you is trying to tell you. Receive the yeah. input, process it in a more quantum way, and then understand that there's a reason why there's a huge patch of dandelion in your garden right now, because you're totally. a bit toxic. Detox. Totally, totally. Yeah, I, and I, I love that. I think it's such such an important point you've made. There's not just the sort of, you know, physical, um, medicinal aspects to the plants and the and the herbs and the vegetables that you grow in your garden, there's also this much, much deeper spiritual component, spiritual medicine to what you have growing around you that is super powerful, you know? And just talking about probiotics, I mean, all the, all the, um, all the leafy greens are an amazing way of bringing probiotics in, into your system through the microorganisms that are held on them. These microorganisms, um, which we can also call um, elevated biotics, they go into the, the small intestine, into the ileum of the small intestine, which is the last part of the small intestine, and they help the body produce its own B12. And we, there's two, two nutrients that we are highly, highly depleted in in the world today, and that is zinc and B12. And one of the reasons why we're so depleted in B12 is because we're not getting enough homegrown produce. We're not getting enough farmer's market or organic or our own homegrown produce where we find these microorganisms. So our food is depleted of the microorganisms that can help us to cultivate our own B12 production in the body. But dandelion is one of the most powerful plants that holds these microorganisms because of the kind of fluffy fur on dandelion. It really, it really holds the microorganisms. They're attracted to it. And um, it's one of the most powerful probiotics, actually. So that's mm. just something to, to keep in mind. And then those probiotics in turn, you know, then those microorganisms that go into your body, they have a direct effect on how we think and how we feel and how we, you know, how we show up and how we are in the world. Right. I think that's really important. And as we come to the end of today's talk and show which as always has been super interesting and highly relevant i think you know um it, we have moved away from maybe the more agrarian uh, nature of our ancestors only 100 years ago maybe even especially before um the, the land clearances and the pushing of people into the workhouses and the industrial revolution but before that we, we pretty much grew everything organic was the only way that there was really mm -hmm. and now organic is a lifestyle choice that is increasingly becoming only affordable to those people yeah. uh, who, who've got a lot of money and, and that doesn't seem right either so 
you know, it doesn't take an awful lot to, um, <clears throat> excuse me, to, to get a packet of uh, rocket seeds or some lettuce mm. and create a seed tray. And you don't need an awful lot of space for that. But, you know, if we can, um, <coughs> excuse me, if we can uh, somehow grow some of our own leafy greens, but also collect from the garden, then we have the possibility to actually start increasing the things we need in our system, yeah. right? Absolutely. I mean, sprouts, sprouts are a great way to start growing things at home. All you need is a few jars. <clears throat> So yeah, as we um as we think about how to move forward uh, with the information that uh, Rebecca has shared today, you know, and coming from a, a gardening perspective, I definitely would suggest that a mixture of um, organic foraging from good locations, not beside a road, not beside a sewage plant, or anything like this, but nice, nice, uh, healthy fields uh, as much as they can be in the modern world, but also just you know the. I think the pleasure of growing your own food and understanding yeah. that it's, it's grown with your hands, with your love, it doesn't have any chemicals on it. That's also a really important part of the, the process of taking food in is that somehow you've either sourced it or grown it yourself. And there's a huge amount of satisfaction from that. Yeah. And I think that's also part of the process. But um, let's talk about uh, for the final few moments what you've got coming up, uh, Bex, I think, uh, running in parallel actually to what we're doing. So, so please do share with our audience what you've got coming up in March. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I've got my uh, Love Your Liver Spring Cleanse starting on the 1st of March. Um, mm. This is a 21 day process running up, up towards the equinox, which is always a super powerful time. Um, I think this year in particular. Um, so, so yes, so if people are interested in that, then they can find out more about that on my website. But um, the sign up, the sign up is sort of immediate because materials go out one week before in order to give some space to get organized. Um, and this is really teaching people how to deeply, deeply care for their liver. It's getting them set up on the morning routine um, and teaching them how to, you know, create that discipline really in daily life using the right the right foods and the right approach yeah and so if people want to find out more about that uh, what's your website again my website is rebecca o'reilly.com i had to think for a minute there right <laughs> um so you know and uh, bex is going to be running that i think from march the 1st to, to march the 21st is that correct exactly yeah yeah and uh, obviously we were on the same uh, page even before we decided to do this um uh, this yeah. uh, call today this show because we're also going to be running over at qph a nettle immersion uh for the first uh, 13 days we're both uh, seemingly going to be starting our processes uh, with our groups on the beginning of a mayan wave spell march the first is the beginning of the blue hand mayan um uh magic wave spell and that's really about uh uh, connection to healing but also self-realization and I think it's a perfect plan to be working in this way as nettle or similar plants to really bring us into that place of what's our truth and is our truth unhealthy or maybe my truth is I'm not so healthy uh, I would definitely suggest the former is the better route to go on um, so uh, for those of our listeners today who want to check that out please do go over to quantumplanthealing.com and you can find out more information there but look uh, Bex as always an hour has flown by um yeah. i know we've been planning to do this for a while and hopefully there'll be more food as medicine shows coming up but uh, the astrology is tough right now but it can also be worked with in a really really positive way and i think that this time of year you know end of uh, february beginning of march as life is coming back to the world around us let's invite the life back into our bodies let's give our immune systems a kick let's really call in the the wonderful energies that are available and let's make our bodies more available to receive light let's get the sludge out and let's really make 2023 the beginning of, of the new earth that I know that you've been looking to Bex and that I have many of our listeners for a long time because, you know, it's easy to get drawn down into the dense, heavy energies of what's going on, whether it's in our body or in our environment, right? And yeah. it's not serving us. That's the bottom line. The dense, heavy energies and sludge in our system, in our mindsets don't serve us. So let's, um, let's work with the energies. We have a very, very powerful new moon coming up as well in the next few days and set those intentions i want yeah. to be a happy healthy vibrant human being right uh, i want eating to lots of leafy life. greens eating <laughs> lots of leafy greens and enjoying them not seeing them as some sort of chore um yeah. you know maybe uh we often joke on this show there uh, you know i'm a little bit naughty with the food that i eat and so i'm often trying to subvert rebecca's much more uh how to say <laughs> angelic view of food so somewhere in the between uh, i think is what suits everybody but for sure 
Um, Bex uh, really knows her stuff. Do check out her website. Check out her amazing newsletters that she sends out. And if you're feeling like you need that detox, go for it. Sign up and do something good for yourself this uh, this March. So thank you as always. Bex, any final uh, sage thoughts for our audience before you depart for today? I, th I think that's it for me. Just get those, <laughs> leafy, get those leafy greens in. Blend them, juice them, eat them, go for it. Yeah. And most of all, enjoy them. And Boy, enjoy yeah. them. Enjoy them. <laughs> Love them. Yeah. All right, lovely. Well, look, thank you thank again you for family. today's show. Thank yeah. you, everybody, for listening. And uh, hope to see you again on a Food as Medicine show in the near future. Take care, everybody. Ciao for now. Bye.